Hello and welcome back to our details. Navara Blue Audi RS5. Fully washed, decontaminated, wheels sorted there off to one side, waiting on coatings later on. On the ramp, ready for paint inspection. So the vehicle is here for a two-stage minor paint correction, a cutting pass followed by a refining pass, which is hopefully lifting between 70 and 80% paint defects from the surface. It's a couple of years old now, it's the newest shape, the facelift, I think it has 20,000 miles on the clock. Um, it's a daily vehicle. It's a great colour, I love this. It's been a while since I worked on Navara Blue and it's not in a terrible condition. The owner has only had the car two weeks, so New customer to White Details, travelled about three hours down to drop the vehicle off. On inspecting the car with the customer when they dropped it off, there were some telltale signs here, overspray, of some repair work, which obviously alerted the customer's attention. Some deeper scratches, some deeper scratches in the edge of the front wing there. The whole surface has a covering of buffer trailing only light in places, you can see on the A pillar there on the near side, the lines that radiate off the light, gloss black mirror cap, messed up, needs tackling. And then we come onto the near side rear wing, again light buffer trails, some odd goings on here on the black, flat black. Oh, hadn't seen that before. In the bottom of this channel, there are a series of sanding marks as well. Okay, as we go up and over the top, it's clear to see a blend mark, unfortunately. So this rear wing has been painted, but rather than do the full A pillar, which would have been a lot easier and lose it down here, Whoever's done it has decided to feather it in to the original paintwork and then it's been lost on this swage line. So that's original, this is new, that's original. Some love marks left behind here from the sander. Big wool buffer trail, presumably wool. Oh, that's a nasty one. Bumper, that won't be coming out. Up on the roof, little gloss black section at the back there. And then more buffer trails on the offside A pillar and on the mirror. Overall, it should be pretty straightforward. Oops, nice easy one back after lockdown. Uh, Quite a few complications on the doors and the sides get particularly lots of small edges and ledges to individually tackle. Two inch section there, the concave section to get the pad to flow. Get the pad to flow in there. And in here. So the music's going back on. I'm gonna test some pad and polish combinations. See where we get to by the end of the day. one pass and an IPA wipe down to strip any remaining residue off. Uh, looking pretty good, pleased with that. I can continue at that. I was fearing that this paint might be rock hard. The gloss black is a bit torn up, that's to be expected. Lots of micro there, that will need now polishing. 
after the compounding, polishing and refining, whereas the blue, nice and tight to the edge, and the edge work, that will just now be refined. And it should look rather special when it's finished. I'm obviously out of practice. Uh, a pillar over the blend mark, down, done, three inch and the one inch and the hybrid you've just seen. But tape, when it lifts, when it comes away from the paint, uh, if I was to buff away the residue now, you're gonna get lots of glue and contamination and just bits, tacky stuff from the tape onto the cloth, which then is gonna impregnate lots of damage, or not so much damage, but nasty, horrible. Nasty, horrible bits onto the freshly polished paint, which we don't want. So the tape needs to be reseated before we buff it away, and then it'll be redone before we refine, assuming that this cut under here is good enough and doesn't need cutting again. It's this I'm intrigued to see. Pleased with that, it's never gonna be invisible, but it's certainly taking the edge off it. That now won't grab your attention. And whilst, <coughs> and whilst I was in inspecting the ape a low down, look at the black here. Like an overspray, lots of swirls and a little triangle section there. And like an overspray here too. I'm gonna come down the rest of this shoulder onto the C pillar, leave it there, go around, finish the roof, and then jump on the bonnet. Not actually jump on the bonnet, that would be madness.
Jim, the white details. Um, very well, thank you. Yes, uh, just a quick paint touch up, please. Um, it's uh, an Audi RS5 and I think it's Navarro Blue. morning day three <coughs> cutting complete the car is covered in lint and dust and before we start refining just gonna have a bit of a, a reset of the unit and shake the car down so to speak uh, with the feather duster and the vehicle blower at that point once the refining starts the feather duster goes away I wouldn't use I wouldn't use this on the paint again once it is refined because there is a chance even with this of inducing more so it's all going to be dusted down IPA'd Retaped in some areas. The bonnet will be refined as a whole. It will be blown down with the vehicle blower to eliminate loose material that could potentially pick up on the cloth and mark. And buffed. And then the wing and the door blown down, buffed. The wing and the boot blown down, buffed. By the way, one of the best accessories for polishing and detailing in general. These little bad boys. A wooden kebab or a skewer, a cocktail stick, it's always up there, it's accessible. Obviously there is the toothpickery of the whole car to follow where the crevices, the panel gaps, the badges and the edges are cleansed with the cloth and the stick. Uh, but it's actually, I'm starting to sort of do it as I go now, areas that I see as I go. Small intricate areas where you can't quite get your finger into polish, you wrap this around the cloth. Next week there's another Audi for a minor, de uh, minor detail, minor correction, you maybe saw it earlier in the video. It's the R8 GT, it's a limited thing, apparently there's only 18 in the country. Lots of matte satin carbon fibre, obviously this can't be polished, we don't want to add a sheen to that. Owner has a towel on the seats, but they're extremely rigid bucket seats. Massive room for improvement, as you can see, over the bonnet. It is only a minor correction. As much as the owner wanted to chase paint perfection on this, budget allows, but it's a vehicle that gets tracked. It's gonna go around the Nürburgring, it's gonna go around Silverstone, and just generally, he doesn't want it perfect, if it doesn't want to worry too much about it, because he's fearful that it's a vehicle that's still used. So minor correction, wheel coatings and engine bay on the R8 next week. Apparently that's like Godzilla when it starts up as well, 640 odd horsepower, but extremely noisy when it first starts. So shan't be doing that in this episode. Um, so be sure to subscribe for next week's update on the R8 as the work, as it takes place. Still wearing a baseball cap every, every day since back from New Zealand. Deluxe detail because my hair is pretty wild. Lock down haircut.
Four o'clock, that's me. It's an earlier finish tonight. I've got to get out. I'm playing golf this evening. Not that I can play golf, but I'm meeting some friends in Nottingham for 18 holes. But then again, it's going to get dark quite early tonight, so we'll see how we go. But still got a lot left to do on the Audi. Refining is all finished now. It's very well, very well responded. It's responded very well. Oh, such a lovely car. Uh, tomorrow, 2 p.m., I have a company coming to look at the scissor lift. It hasn't been serviced in a very long time, so it just needs a once over, so it needs to come off the ramp by lunchtime. So the morning is going to be calipers, exhaust, wheels, get the wheels back on, touch-ups, a once-over to the interior, and I might even end up saving the paint coatings just so it's not too crammed tomorrow. Save the paint coatings till Friday. The owner is not in a rush for the car back. It's meant to be four days, but if it's four and a half, right. See you in the morning. Not really, I'm still here.
Hey, why are you no work? Hey. Uh, right, toothpickery done. I'm moving on to the paint coatings now. I've got to wipe down the paintwork again. Gion Prep just to really make sure things are fresh before coating application. For the last hour and a half, I've had the scissor lift technician here. I've had that serviced. So whilst the car was off the ramp to one side and that was work in progress, I've sorted most of the interior and the leather protection. Still got the interior shiny sections to sort as well as the carpets and glass. Uh, I've got the sills and shuts to do, or the coatings to do, I've got mirrors. Why have I written mirrors? Oh, the plastics on the plastics in the mirror. That's all laced and covered in previous polish residue. Uh, glass inside and out. The badge needs polishing. Front end. So it's 10 to 4 now. By the time I start coating, it will be half past 4. Half past four, half past five, half past six. I'll be in here till about seven this evening. Finish off tomorrow. And collection, I think it's tomorrow night, if not Saturday. Application of kamikaze collections of pan coat going down the airline. <clears throat> it's very important if you're applying coatings, it is uh, a much recommended tool to have alongside of you um, as you're pipetting the product onto the block uh, it's occasional that quartz crystals or hardened coating can come out of the pipette out of the bottle onto the block onto the paint which will scratch every time you put this to the paint it has a blast after applying the product uh, as a paint coat there's three to five minutes of settling time, curing time on the paint before you go to buff it off. And average time for me to apply it to a vehicle this size, it's gonna be about an hour and 40, just under two hours. Hello friend, I am a banker in ADB Bank. I want to transfer an abandoned $18.5 million to your bank account. 40% will be your share. No risk involved, but it keeps as a secret. Contact me for more debtor. Oh, brilliant. That's me sorted for the rest of your life. No more punching cars. Nine billion dollars in the bank. Can you imagine? By the way, the little counter, the YouTube counter, 62,900. They are white details followers. That's an incredible amount. It would be great to, it's a big push. I know it's a big push. It's going to take some time. 100,000, when you hit 100,000, YouTube send you a plaque. It's a nicely framed plaque that goes in the wall as recognition of your created content on their platform. Uh, and about 70% of the views on this channel are from unsubscribed uh, accounts. So please consider subscribing to the channel. It'll help it to grow. And that's quite a nice, it is quite a nice target. It's kind of realistic um, without going silly because the next one after the 100,000 for the next plaque, I think is a million. So that's a big gap. Yeah.
lifestyle. That's me. Coat has gone pretty well. Two bonus. Uh, last but not least, the last area to coat. Last but not least, the final area to coat is the gloss black diffuser section. Um, the block and suede, as good as it is for the flat panels, the sides, and parts of the bumper, actually, for the complications of some of the angles down there, I'm actually just gonna use it as a bit of a hand suede without the block, for the most part. There is one area that we use the block. Product. Air. How can get you low? Right, if you ever decide to do filming on your cars, be prepared to. Be prepared to spend ages messing about with the camera. The block can actually be used for this board part. So I've done the rest of the car now, so uh, this is likely to be the most risky area for contamination if you have to buff it off and pick up a fragment of dust or grit or dirt or whatever. I'm not using the materials and cloths under there to then do the bonnet, for instance. That would just be daft. Block to one side now. Product. Spray. And just literally wipe it on now. It's as good as I can do in these areas. So as soon as this area is done, coatings are finished, these towels will go in the bin to one side. They're actually reused, they're washed and reused for engine bays, wheels, trim, whatever. I want, I want to use them on the paintwork again. Shower. Uh, with the grill to one side, I haven't touched that yet, that needs doing. Chrome rings, tarnishing in the channels at the bottom. Normally the underside is worse. Uh, probably need light for this though. And the underside, oh yeah, look at that. That needs addressing. That'll keep me busy for the next 20 minutes. By the way, so. Uh, you know that blend mark and then it's like rear quarter, that size had a bit of paint, fine. Um, I hate being the bearer of bad news, I'm not sure what everyone else, how everyone else deals with this. Um, it's a case of when the customer drops off the car. Would you sir or madam like to know if I find anything on the walls? Would you, do you want to know? Because if you've had the car, this is a newly purchased vehicle, but still, if you've had the car for seven years and it's your pride and joy, it's a garage queen, you know the car inside and out. And then some idiot like me comes along and says, oh yeah, by the way, three of the wheels have been refurbished, all three panels on this side have been done, and the tailgate's been painted. It sort of ruins the relationship somewhat with the car, tarnishes it. So, or at least I think it would do anyway myself. Um, my VM has had a lot of paint, I know that, it's fine, I accept that. But if it comes as a surprise to the client, I'd rather just have their sort of say before I tell them. So, yes, sir, this rear wing has been painted, but in the process of vacuuming out and blowing underneath the seat to get the crumbs and the litter, um, some shards of glass, some tiny little glass sections float about. So, something's happened, basically. It's had either a knock on the side or it's been vandalized slash broken into. Obviously, my customer at this point is very upset, disappointed, uh, having spent, I don't know, 
40, 50,000 pounds on the RS5 recently, a new purchase, they wished they knew more from the main dealer. Various messages have been backwards and forwards with the client and Audi to show his disappointment in, obviously, they're unlikely to point out, a main dealer is unlikely to point out that whilst the car has been with them, they've repainted the front end for stone chips, which is common, or they've done the wheels, which again is very common. Um, but in this instance, I come along, point out these bad areas, relay it to the customer, they've gone back to Audi. Just spoke with the Audi sales manager, they had the rear quarter resprayed themselves and wheels refurbished ready for sale. Having a bit of a chat now about the dishonesty of not disclosing that to when I asked for the full history and that bit was omitted. Uh, apparently it is really clear on their records and the sales guys chose not to tell me. Let's see what they offer to do about it. I think I've upset one or two members of staff at dealerships, but I'm sorry, it's just what I do. So yeah, in the comments below, if you're a detailer, how do you go about pointing out the bad bits without hurting or upsetting the client. Uh, again, if it's their pride and joy and they just get disappointed. As with most of the bright work sections, grills or trim, auto finesse triple is being used here. Small cut down section of microfiber. Uh, if you'd like a large list of the equipment, tools, kits and chemicals that is used, uh, you will find most of in the video description in the text, I've left links to both Amazon and my friend Ultimate Finish, who stock, sell and supply uh, the gear. If you can't see what you're looking for in the actual text below, there is a link in the text below to an expanded list of kit. So I think there's only a dozen or so items, the most popular, most commonly used in the video description, but then it's a link to my website, which you ought to go and have a look. And if you do choose to use the Amazon links, it is an affiliate partner link for 4 white details, so you are supporting the channel uh, at the same time. That's certainly a lot better on the front face of it. I don't think, however, under here will be finished and finalised yet. I've not checked. I don't think it will be thorough enough. No, no, it's not bad. Not bad for a blind effort. That left me excited. I've just emptied this is a pan new box of the pancakes. And the foam blocks that were supplied from Kamikaze for the application, I like to tuck the suede into the side. So I get a knife and I make an incision to actually tuck the suede in so it's tight, it's not gonna fall off. The new blocks, I've got pre-cut sections. Look at that. Nice work, Kai. Always thinking. It's Friday morning, last few hours on the Udi, working around the blast currently, just doing a pre-clean before the actual clean with an IPA and a water spot remover. The idea of the pre-clean is literally there is polished splatter and residue left on the glass and the polishing stages which you don't want to contaminate these cloths with, uh, which I'm then going to use these inside and out. So, I'll tell you what, glass cleaning seems to be something, well no, it's something that people struggle with. Uh, I used to myself. Uh, if this video gets, I don't know, let me just check what other videos have got. So it's, oof, okay, some of the big videos have got 8,000, 9,000 likes. If this video gets 5,000 likes, I will do a specific how-to, glass cleaning how-to video, just for the glass cleaning. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that.
tick, shiny bits on the interior tick, exhaust tick, tyres tick. Whoa. Oh, look at that colour. Look at that colour. They'll be pleased with that. If you've made it through this far, I thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Please consider subscribing if you aren't already. In the back of my mind now, I've got that 100,000 subscriber milestone. Uh, it's a way off, considering it's taken three years to get 60,000, which is an, an incredible achievement. Uh, but maybe we'll have to do a bit of an epic giveaway, maybe even a free detail of some sort at the 100,000 mark. Worth celebrating. I do like that colour, Navara Blue. There's an S3, an Audi S3 in Navara Blue in about a fortnight, three weeks time. One to look forward to as well, part of a new car prep package. Next week is the Audi R8, the GT. It's one of only 18 in the country, I'm told. As far as a minor correction goes, it's pretty good. It's pretty nice. I always say to customers that are not sure if to go minor or major, if it's worth the extra few days labor and cost. A minor correction on the most part from this distance will look as good as a major correction um, from distance. It's just with a major correction we're chasing more marks here and there. So in the after footage, don't be surprised if you see one or two stray rounded off deeper scratches. It's about 80% defect removal. And also I still like the idea Still not quite sure if it can because of coronavirus and movements of people together in the same area, in the bubble. But me coming to you, if you're an outfit, a detailing centre with a shop or a workspace, where you would like for me to come, uh, document three or four days on a job, work with you on the same car, it's going to be massive exposure for your brand. There are costs involved, haven't worked that out yet. There will be travel expenses, accommodation, B&B, &B, but it would get me out, your benefit, one way or another, and it'd just be nice to sort of get about and meet more people. Um, if that's of interest, do drop an email with the uh, subject, you to me. See you next time.
Pleasure. Uh, look forward to uh, getting the vlog across to you. When it's finished, before it goes live, I'll send it to you directly. Thanks for checking it out. Yeah.